The Resistance are arranging everything. I didn't hear that. The Resistance are arranging everything. <laughs> Captain Hans Gehring, a lovably gormless German army officer, was a regular character of the British sitcom Allo Allo. We were just reading how well the war is going. There's a very good picture of the Führer on page three. <laughs> Set during the Second World War, the show takes place in German-occupied France, and is centred around cafe owner René Artois who reluctantly helps Michel, leader of the Resistance, to help British airmen escape the country. Two specifically. You are to have the honour of shooting these men who have raped the whole of France! Uh, if I may say so, that is a slight exaggeration. <laughs> Hans is the right-hand man to the equally buffoonish Colonel von Strom. Their friendly, but often tense, relationship with René is built around business and blackmail. If Herr Flick finds out, he will make you talk. And you might tell him about us. Oh, I, I would die before I did that, Colonel. I would try to arrange it. If I want to shoot you, I only have to say the word. Fire. <laughs> In exchange for various wartime luxuries, like butter, the Colonel and Captain are permitted to highly kinky pleasures with René's waitresses, Yvette and Maria both of whom René is also having affairs with. Well, I, I am thinking about my little wife in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> I, am oh, I, am, uh, I am thinking that Berlin is a very long way away. <laughs> Unlike most situation comedies that usually reset to the status quo without fully resolving the outcome, the scenario of each episode carried on from the one before it. Hence, each episode of Allo Allo starts with René breaking the fourth wall to explain to the audience where he is and what is happening. You are probably wondering what I am doing driving a German armoured car. Some of you may be curious to know what I am doing in an A-stack. It is possible that the more curious among you are wondering what I am fiddling with under the bed. <laughs> Created by Jeremy Lloyd and David Croft, the series was a parody of the drama series Secret Army. Alolo was the fourth series Croft and Lloyd teamed up to produce, the first being Are You Being Served? Colonel, we are Germans! To have our uniforms made in London must be against the rules! <laughs> I did not order deluxe service! Who ordered the luxuries? I did. <laughs> Hans was played by Sam Kelly, whose second claim to fame, besides this popular sitcom, was appearing in the acclaimed sitcom Porridge, playing the illiterate Warren, who carried the same level of idiotic innocence as Hans. Could you not just wound him a little bit? Uh, uh, yeah. with, with a 25 pound shell, that is not easy. <laughs> Allo Allo began life as a television pilot, first broadcast on the 30th of December 1982. Make a wish. I wish I could see my wife and children again very soon. You're not supposed to tell your wish, Dunkock. You spoil the whole thing. I'm very sorry, Colonel. The Colonel and the Captain have stolen from a local chateau a priceless work of art, a trendy activity for German officers during the war. The fallen Madonna with the big boobies, and a cuckoo clock, which Hans hides by stuffing down his trousers when Gestapo officer Herr Flick makes an unexpected visit. Herr Flick tells the men that Hitler himself wants the painting, and that he shall not leave the town until it is found. <laughs> While ordering René to hide their pensions in his cellar, the Colonel and Captain find the cellar is already occupied by two British airmen. René promises to not tell the Gestapo about the stolen painting if the officers don't arrest him for working with La Résistance. One or? <laughs> the pilot was deemed successful enough to be greenlit as a series, which did not commence until almost two years later. The Gestapo will buy you wine. A rare occasion, Herr Flick. It will be on the Gestapo entertainment allowance. <laughs> Even rarer. 
The show ran for a total of 85 episodes, produced between 1984 and 1992. Of the cast of reoccurring characters, Hans was one of the few who began at the beginning, but didn't make it to the final season. But I'll elaborate upon that later. We can explain. We can explain. I'm waiting. He's waiting. As with other comedy shows scripted and directed by David Croft, Allo Allo is filled with catchphrases. Now listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. Good morning. You stupid woman. It is I, Leclerc. <laughs> what a mistake of the maker. My dicky ticker. Hans himself had one, which was not only one of the first established during the first episode, but is one of the strangest catchphrases in TV history. Hey Hitler! Hey Hitler! Clap! 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 <laughs> like many viewers, I had originally thought Hans was just blurting out a silly noise. In 2007's The Return of a Low Low, part reunion, part documentary, Sam Kelly clarified that Hans didn't like having to constantly praise the Fuhrer. So he'd shortened the mandatory Heil Hitler to Tla. Club, 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 club. Get out! <laughs> Of the first seven episodes of the series, Hans and Colonel von Strom spend three of them out of uniform, as René persuades them to let the British airmen, Carstairs and Fairfax, borrow their clothes, in the first of their too-many-to-count botched attempts to escape. But, Colonel, if the Gestapo ever found out that we have been helping British airmen to escape, do you not think that they would be cross? Captain Gearing's highlights in the first season include accidentally blowing up a railway line, which in his defence the resistance were about to explode anyway. We will give to the firing party wooden bullets. Wooden bullets disintegrate ten foot from the muzzles of the rifles. How close do they stand? <laughs> not as close as that. Providing it is not foggy. <laughs> On the Colonel's birthday, he and Hans are taken prisoner by Communists. Why are you wiggling about? You will be pleased to hear I've managed to get my lighter out of my back pocket. <laughs> but you were trying to give up smoking. At the end of this same episode, Hans gets the real fallen Madonna with the big boobies, muddled up with a forgery they had commissioned. You gave her flick the wrong one! You're cross, aren't you? And he demonstrates the dance of the Hitler Youth with Helga, the colonel's secretary and passionate lover of the emotionless hair flick. <laughs> In series two, hair flick has concealed the painting and its forgery inside Canuckverst sausages so he can sell the original and send the fake fallen Madonna with the big boobies to Hitler. The German spine! <laughs> Thanks to Helga, the colonel has Hitler's sausage swapped for a paintingless sausage, and orders Hans and René to blow up the train transporting it, so neither Herr Flick nor the Führer will know the stolen painting has been stolen. Borrowing a tank from Lieutenant Gruber, René's biggest admirer, Hans misses the train, but manages to hit a low bridge. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Deducing the sausage trickery, Herr Flick captures the Colonel, Captain and René, who is disguised as a woman because he is hiding from the Undertaker who challenged him to a duel. I'm scraping at the cement. I'm hoping to loosen one of these bricks. The Count of Monte Cristo did it. <laughs> It took him 20 years. <laughs> Come to think of it, the film had already started when I went in. Just as the three men are about to be crushed to death, they are saved by General von Klinkerhofen. Ironically, the man who sentenced René to a firing squad in the first series, and after this episode, becomes the main antagonist of Alolo. I'm sorry, General. Your powerful stare makes me wilt and go weak. <laughs> I cannot say no to a man like you. <laughs> Who is this idiot? Series 2 ended with a 50-minute Christmas special, though it is the Kaiser's birthday that is being celebrated. Is that your glasses? You're even more attractive. <laughs> so are you. <laughs>
The colonel and the captain plan to assassinate von Klinkerhofen with a drug in a jug, but have competition from the resistance and their ghetto from a chateau. What about the ghetto from the chateau? It contains a bomb. Do you not see that if we kill him with the pill from the till by making with it the drug in the jug, you need not light the candle with the handle of the ghetto from the chateau? Series 3 sees Hans and the Colonel hide in hollow trees, hoping to catch the communist resistance. Is the secret camera operating correctly? I will demonstrate, Colonel. <laughs> Maria the waitress is caught with the painting which she was bringing to Lieutenant Gruber to duplicate. While René rescues Maria from General von Klunkerhofen, the Colonel and Captain steal their stolen painting back. Hans, you have been to Staff College. Hmm? How do you get a sausage out of a wardrobe in the General's dressing room? Hmm, I think I must have been away that day. Undercover to try and catch René and his staff helping the Resistance to help the airmen fly back to England, Hans accidentally squashes Herr Flick's car. We must slip in amongst them unobserved. Unobserved? In a steamroller? A tunnel is being dug from Monsieur Alphonse's cemetery to a nearby prisoner of war camp. A scheme is concocted where Carstairs and Fairfax, disguised as French tarts, pretend to be murdered by mistake by Rene's wife Edith using Captain Gearing's gun. You are holding in your hand a smoking goon. <laughs> You are clearly the guilty potty. I did not do it! Tell them I did not do it! I was not looking. <laughs> In the sixth and final episode of the third season, René, Edith, Michelle, the waitresses, the colonel and the captain become trapped in the prisoner of war camp, due to Colonel von Strom collapsing the tunnel while in pursuit. And I suffer from claustrophobia! <laughs> I have had it ever since my mother tried to smuggle me out of Berlin in a suitcase. <laughs> Why would she do that? So my father wouldn't find out about me. Hans once again being careless with his gun is the reason they do not inform their fellow German soldiers guarding the camp. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, <it's you. laughs> Hitler has only got one salad. In the first episode of Series 4, it is decided that Hans will be catapulted over the wire so he can return to the camp with Gruber's tank to free the Colonel and our froggy friends. But as soon as he lands, he is dragged away by the Resistance, which despite everyone seeing, nobody comments upon. Hans doesn't return, and by the start of the second episode, the protagonists and minor antagonist have escaped back to the village. Do you think he has deserted? No, not Hans. He's neither the courage nor the intelligence to be a coward. At the end of the episode, a radio call from Hans explains that the Resistance thought he was an escaping British POW, and so did to him what Michel has failed to do with Carstairs and Fairfax for 22 episodes. Sent him to England. What am I going to tell the General? Tell him the port is very good and the British think they're going to win. This rather rushed evacuation of the character was the fault of Sam Kelly. He had decided three seasons was enough, and he no longer wanted to be one of Alolo's regular characters. Croft and Lloyd substituted the role of Colonel von Strom's childish sidekick with the very brash Captain Bertarelli, who had his own spin on Tla. Halva! Halva Mussolini! <laughs> Kelly wasn't the only member of the cast who dropped out after Series 3. Francesca Gonshaw, who played the Mini Maria, was replaced by the even minier Mimi Labonk. Four other cast members would depart before the ninth and final season of Alo Alo, two of which were caused by the death of the actor. But Series 4 wasn't to be the last we saw or heard from Hans. In an episode of the seventh season, René and Edith, desperate to get out of the country, have hopped on a plane to Blighty, intended for transporting Fairfax and Carstairs. At London's military headquarters, their interrogator turns out to be... Club! Oops. <laughs> Sorry, chaps. Old habit. 
Hans gives further details regarding why he never returned. He was given the choice of either working to fight against his country and former allies, or be sent to a POW camp. As Monsieur and Madame Artois are considered heroes, despite their success rate being zero, Hans takes them to meet Churchill. And that night he says goodbye as Rennie and Edith are flown back to France. This an air raid! Our glorious Air Force, whose brave pilots defied the might of the few, have come to blow the pants off the British imperialists! Oops, I must go for some more brainwashing! Sam Kelly continued to be an active familiar face on British television during the 90s and noughties, until his death at the age of 70 in 2014. He played main characters in the sitcoms Haggard, On the Up, and Barbara. One of his final appearances had the biggest budget of his career, the Nanny McPhee sequel. It is said that these champagne glasses were modelled on the bosom of Marie Antoinette. Oh, they should have modelled them on Helga's bosom, if he'd have got a bigger drink. Um, I, I, I have never seen Helga's bosom, I was only guessing. <laughs> As for Captain Hans Gearing, Kelly admitted that, in hindsight, he regretted leaving the show that allowed him to perform ample amounts of Nazi salutes and fondle French waitresses. It is not always easy, you know, goose-stepping about, shouting and ranting. It is hard to be a conquering hero when it is not in your nature. Hitler will do his nut! 